welcome back to our revival and evangelistic service, the last one for this camp 2017. Thank God for what he has done for us so far, and we are looking into him in anticipation that he's going to do even more tonight in Jesus' name. We will sing together from CGS number 26, CGS 26. And um, of course, we want to pray that the Lord will keep us on that old time path, uh, the maintaining the old landmark and keeping the old time religion, just as we've heard from the group that um, sang old landmark. I'm proud to that, the choir singing Ken meeting style and then opening with a brass um, orchestration. For our internet audience, we are glad that you are looking this way tonight to be together with us virtually so that you too can partake of the blessings that the Lord has planned for us tonight. We pray that a similar blessings that we are receiving here will come across your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Hymn number 26, we have 26, verses 1, 2, 3. CGS 26. Verses 1, 2, and 3. I know it's our song leader. Christ is my portion. can say that we have a witness within us and um, for those of us who cannot say that yet we would sing um, uh, we'll sing song 292 294 blow ye the trumpet blow the year of jubilee is come so there's another chance for us so that we can actually claim that Christ is our portion forever and that we have a witness within so we'll sing verses 1 4 and 5 of CGS 294 
next song we'll sing is 202. 202. For all of us, there's a blessed invitation for all of us to seek Christ again, even if we're saved, if we're not saved, if we're sanctified, baptized, but just to seek Christ. This is the last um, revival and evangelistic service for us to um, seek Christ. So we're going to sing that song. We're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 4. And verse 4, we'll sing standing up, after which we'll be led in prayer. As we remain standing with our eyes closed, we call on Brother Mark in front of our to lead us in congregational prayer. We thank you, God. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for another opportunity you've given us to gather around in your house. We know you have something great for us. Pray that you uh, bless each and every soul in this meeting, oh God. Pray that you save souls. I want you to sanctify souls. We are looking up to you, God, to uh, fill with the Holy Ghost and fire. And we pray that you touch the sick and heal them, O oh Lord. When we come to uh, the time of the service, when the sermon is coming out, O oh Lord, we pray that the preacher have the unction from you. We pray that you, the word come out with power. We pray for the time that we come around the altars, Lord, to lay our, our prayers before you, that you answer each and every prayer. Amen. We want to thank you, Lord, for we know we, you do it Amen. for the glory of your name. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, we open our hymn book to hymn number 507. CGS 507 is the song we are going to use for the opening of our testimony. Uh, the testimony tonight is going to be for those who have not testified at all since the beginning of this kind of meeting. And of course, unless you have received something very um, recent after your last testimony, then you can join that group. But before we do that, um, I would like to express um, a deep appreciation to um, all of you that have joined us for this kind of meeting, beginning with Brother Darrell and Sister Debbie, all our ministers, our choir members, the ushers, the AV team, the restaurant helpers, uh, the altar workers, the security, the cleaners, and um, even those that are secret workers, praying for every meeting asking God to just lead and pour out his blessings, those that we may not see, but God has their record in heaven. We really appreciate all of you for um, taking part in making this 2017 meeting 
another successful story for all of us. Thank you so much. May the Lord bless all of you. Amen. For our last day arrangement, since um, tomorrow, usually we don't have time to go into all of the details of the arrangement for our departure. We usually give that um, during our last um, evening meeting, revival meeting rather, which um, uh, I would like to do to today, uh, this evening. Sunday school, of course, tomorrow morning uh, uh, at 9.30, devotional service um, at 11.00. And then um, the distribution of park lunch will not start until um, about 1 p.m. And of course, the coach departure or departure of coaches from different locations, you already know about your time from your um, group leader or your pastor. And if you don't know, please try to check further on that. From the camp office, I understood that um, the departure announcement has been pasted everywhere, but again, we would like to bring that to our notice, even from here, just in case some of us might miss uh, um, that, um, the, the one that is pasted um, everywhere. We are to vacate our room as we come to the church in the morning. Um, we are used to that now. That shouldn't be news to us. Our luggage should be packed overnight. I don't know where they put that one here. Um, if you don't pack your luggage overnight, then you, you pack it whenever you've chosen to, to do your packing. Um, the, 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 the suggestion here is that so that you don't delay or come to the last service uh, uh, late. You want to take advantage of the last service even though you've been blessed or you're still waiting for one thing or the other. I think that's why this ad, um, announcement. All keys collected, collected must be returned to the designated basket in front of the camp office. Fridge freezers must be left uh, um, empty. Make sure that if you have any leftover food items, you will pack these with you. All higher bed covers must be folded and left at the center of the lounge where you are located. Um, they say you should not bring them to the camp office or even that area. All rubbish must be caref carefully disposed of in the compactor near the dining hall. Um, your luggage, usually tonight, the camp organizers have put um, coach um, identification in different areas. So when you look at the coach list and you know you are in coach A or B or C, more especially for delegates from London, um, as we are having four coaches, and you know which coach you belong to, make sure you take your luggage to the place where uh, the place that has been designated for your particular coach um, to park and to depart from. All areas of your residence must be cleaned and left in the manner that um, we, we, we will find acceptable. Elderly folks who will need help to carry their luggage please inform the camp office so that arrangements can be made with our young people to help you. Um, no luggages are allowed at the foyer or entrance to the main building because of fire escape regulations. So let us make sure we put our luggage where um, has been designated. Those who have not paid for their camp fees for any reason should report to the camp office or their leaders. I remember to do that. And the um, list of people that will be working um, in helping with the distribution of park lunch tomorrow, the, this list is on display. It's not a particular branch or a particular group. These are just selected names, and these have been pasted for, for us to see. So those are the people that will help with um, all the final arrangements of distribution of um, um, park lunch. Okay, as I said, we're going to sing hymn number 507. I always go to Jesus, no matter when or where, and Jesus comes to me. We're going to sing those three verses, and then we are going to have two minutes testimony. Let us remember that we have to stand up, and then those carrying the mic, we then um, find their way to us. At the end, after a few testimonies, we have the first special. It's really, it, it is really surprising from the choir. One of them, or if we have more than that, will open the um, second part of the testimony. And after a few testimonies, then we go to the last special, My God is Real, a solo from Brother Mike, 
before the word of exhortation tonight to be given by Brother Godwin. I know, please. grace of God that saved me. It is the grace of God that kissed me. It is the grace of God that brought me here. I did promise God because God did something wonderful last year and I testified in my local church and that God, I promised God that I was going to testify this to the whole world. And there's no better place to say it than here where you have our members from all over the branches, all over the world. Last year I was sick like never before. But when I testified in the church like I did then, um, God sent down three heavenly hosts that came to my room and told me what to do. Asked me, raise your hands. At first they told me they had come. I said, come to do what? They said they had come to do a job. I said, to do what job? Surgery, they said. I wasn't, I didn't, I, had, I never had anything like um, any organ that needed any surgery or something like that. All I knew that I was sick. I couldn't even get out of bed. For, I was sick for the greater part of last year. So, but when this heavenly host came, and then they were all dressed in white apparel, they went and brought something like um, a, a drip that they were going to administer to me. They said, raise up your hand. And I raised up my hand. They said, raise up your left thumb. I raised it. They put something, an instrument. And then within split seconds, they said to me, they are finished. And the next day, I got up and I was never sick. And that was the healing. So there is healing power in the blood of Jesus Christ. There is healing power in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because I know his name. And because this testimony is for two minutes, and I've just used one minute, I would want everyone to sing with me heartily. And what is that song? I know his name. His name is Counselor. His name is Prince of Peace. His name is King of Kings. I know his name. I know his name. His name is King of Kings. I know his name. I know his name. I know his name, his name is Jesus Christ, I know his name, I know his name, I know his name, his name is Son of God, I know his name, his name is Son of God, I know his name. Praise God. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. I'm so grateful for this great opportunity this evening to testify to the glory of God. I, most time I don't like standing to testify. But yesterday night, God told me, if you don't testify, because you asked me of so many things last year, and I've done almost all for you.
but you still insist on something, just one thing remaining, that you want to behave like t uh, nine lepers. I say, God, today you will give me the grace. May the name of the Lord be glorified. I thank God for saving my soul. I thank God for the sanctification of my soul and the baptism of Holy Ghost and fire. I thank God for healing. He prayed this year, since I came to this country for 10 years, I've never been sick like that. I was looking at myself inside myself. I was crying. I don't know what to do. And somebody from home phoned my husband and said that, oh, they should be praying for somebody. I said, well, my husband, don't worry. God is praying for me. And I thank God, as I turned my eyes, I saw the oil that my husband always used to pray for other people. I never remember, maybe because he's my husband. I now say, please, can you put that oil and pray for me? And he prayed for me. Uh, the grace of God, that was the end of the sickness. Last year, not this year, my son, one of my sons in the university came home and he gave us a very terrible story about those people living with him. We were so panicking, myself and my husband. We don't know what to do. We were even disturbing the pastor. Look at what happened. We don't know what to do. But do you know this God is great? Yes. This God is wonderful. Yes. What we were even panicking for, God has already given us victory. But we didn't know. Because my, my son was just trying to explain to us, we were shaking. But glory be to God, God gave him victory. He went back to school. God removed him from that accommodation. And where he's living presently is free of charge. May the name of the Lord be glorified. Amen. I pray that at the end of my life, I will see God in heaven. Amen. I want to thank God for this camp meeting. I want to thank God for saving my soul and sanctifying me. I want to thank God that during this camp meeting, he baptized me with the Holy Ghost. Amen. I want to thank God for the youth body in this church, which is so encouraging and supportive and helped to pray with me to get my baptism. Um, I give God all the glory. I would thank like the Lord pray. for bringing me to this glorious church. Uh, it was a faithful day, and uh, the Lord asked me, uh, do, you, do you want to know the truth? I said, yes, I want to know the truth. He said, go to Apostolic Faith Church. A woman is waiting for you. I said, what happened? And then I woke up. I started Googling it, uh, looking, because I haven't heard of that Apostolic Faith Church. Behold, I found the Apostolic Faith Church number in London, and uh, they showed me, they introduced me to one of our brothers. And since then, I never looked back. And I came the first time here in the camp meeting. I, I thought I've got all the experiences. I knelt down. The Lord said, I want you to do it in an Apostolic Faith way. And I got the three experiences that night. Saved, sanctified, and I was baptized by the Holy Ghost. Since all in all, I never, never look. I've been blessed, be healed. My children are well. I'm still praying for them to join me in this glorious church. And in this, uh, it, it, the, the ride hasn't been easy. It has been up and down. In one of the, my lowest time here was uh, the Lord wanted to teach me how to forgive. And when I went through this battle, the Lord, I knelt down, thought, I said, no, 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 I'm going to, uh, he said, no, you haven't forgiven. I want you to forgive. And I, ah, and I knelt down in the altar again. He said, no, 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 I want you to forgive. And he taught me how to forgive. He said, now, be praying for them. Be praying for these people that hurt you. And the, the Lord, told, you know, when you go through a journey, you might not have something. You might not benefit anything out of it. The Lord is so merciful. He took me and he taught me lesson. I know how to forgive and I pray for them daily for God to strengthen them. And Lord will do that for them and bless them wholly. And then some of my journey too, I was sick. They said I have cancer of the lungs. Behold, I told the doctor, thank you very much because I trust my Lord. And my son is sick now. I'm still trusting the Lord. In Jesus' name. People pray for me. Amen. Praise the Lord. I just want to thank God today because God is real. I'm saying God is real because I've experienced him. Not just 
10 or 13 years ago when I first got saved. It was in a youth camp, the first youth camp we had. I thank God because he saved me, he sanctified me, he filled with the Holy Ghost. And I thank him, that's where my journey started. But I can say that I'm not thanking him just for that experience alone. I'm thanking him for the experience of this morning. I thank him for a new salvation, a new sanctification. And, um, you know, the, the Holy Ghost is something I've, I've always, over the years, I've sort of doubted. Um, and I don't know why. Um, it's just something I've just doubted. The devil just always put a doubt in my heart about it. And, you know, I just want to thank God because yesterday we went, um, you know, we we're praying a, a group of us youths. Um, I, you know, I, I really thank God for youths in this church. Um, they are hungry. They are thirsty. And I pray that God will really just raise us all up as an army that will really change our community. Um, and uh, we were praying. I remember we went up to the upper room, the upper room. Um, and a few of us... Um, got baptized in that, in that room. The spirit was really moving and, you know, I've always said, you know, I don't want, you know, no drama, nothing. And God just did it. I knew that it was the Holy Spirit. I knew he was there. You know, it was amazing. It was an amazing experience. I just want to thank God for that. He's just awesome. He is great. I know he is real. I thank God for giving me an amazing wife, uh, a lovely daughter. I thank him for um, recently, God um, did something great in our lives. He gave us a, our own home that we can actually call our, our own. I just want to thank him for it. Um, also, something I want to really thank God for as well is over the last couple of years, I've had a series, quite a few jobs. And for each of those jobs I've had, I've never had to apply. They've been the one coming to look for me. I just want to praise God for that. It's a, it's a testimony that I really want to thank him for. Uh, start a new job on Monday. I just want to thank God, uh, pray that God will go with me and help me to be a light out there. Thank you. If you are wondering for 
Lord has been blessing me in a wonderful way. Amen. And uh, he has done a lot of things for me that eternity will not be able to, it's not enough to praise his name. And he has done great things. I just want to thank God for only three because there are a lot he has done for me. Just only three that he has just done for me recently, not long. The greatest of all which he has done for me is that he saved my soul. Amen. He sanctified me. Amen. He filled me with the power of Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. And since then, he has been my father. He has been my mother. He has been my all in all. Last year, I was very sick. I want to just cut it short, short. I was sick and I was three uh, weeks in the hospital. But the Lord delivered me. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And after I came back, a week after I came back, my wife, the devil laid hand on, he, on her. And she was also in the hospital for about more than one week. I said, what is going on? I sent SOS to London, mm -hmm. and a Brother Isaac distributed it to all the saints. They prayed. And even though they, they, they didn't find anything, though she has undergone a lot of uh, tests, uh, they, they sent her from one hospital to another. Still yet, nothing was found. At last, the Lord brought her home without Amen. any problem. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is great. Amen. The Lord has been blessing me, so I cannot tell it. If I tell you that I am the poor, I was the poorest boy in the station where I came from, you might not believe it. Uh, I was so poor that I don't even have money to shave my hair. It is brethren that we say, oh, take money and go and shave your hair. Uh, but I thank God that when people here, I came to Europe, they didn't believe it. I want to cut things short. I, we have been praying for just, I told God, just four walls of our own. And we prayed for many years. Do you know what? Just last year, December, the Lord gave us not just a four wall, but two houses. Amen. Praise the Lord. And not the greatest of all is that in the same new home, my daughter was filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire in Jesus' name. I don't know how to thank God. God is so great. Please, join me. I want to see him at last in prayer. Please, pray for me. I want to thank. Okay, we have um, six people standing from the way I can count. Let's begin with uh, Sister Rachel from Devon. Then Sammy from New York. And then, um, then we have three, three. Did I miss anybody? Somebody on the gallery? Two people on the gallery? Three. Okay. Only those that were standing when I stood up. Not those that are joining those that were standing by the time I stood up. So how many do we have on the gallery? OK. Rabaya, how many? Two. Sorry. Excuse me. Rabaya said two. I can see Brother Ramide and perhaps maybe we have another person. OK. Two. Two. So we have two there, um, six here, and it's going to be 60 seconds each. One minute. Is that okay, Brother Mike? Yes. One minute, 60 seconds for the testimony. And at the end of that, we have the last special before Brother Godwin brings the word of the Lord. I thank God for the opportunity given to me to testify this evening. Amen. I came into the gospel in 1992 when I was almost going into the grave. God have mercy on me. Jesus Christ saved my soul. Amen. I had, the, 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 I was seeing the fire. I held on to Jesus Christ. I said, I really want to go to, into this fire. Please just take me home. Let me rest. But instead of that, he sanctified me. Amen. But the three year sickness, which the doctors doesn't, didn't know what was wrong with me, continued. I held on to Jesus Christ. On the 7th of August, 1994, during the camp meeting at Tony Village, the power of God came down Amen. and healed me Amen. and baptized me with the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. 
and I saw my Lord on the, on, on, on the stairs. He said, follow me. And I follow him. We enter into the sun together. Since then, I have never been the same again. Last week, the devil pressed me harder. And I was sick. And I, was, I couldn't get up because my husband always go to a walk. I used to crawl to the toilet. And one day, I had a little strength. I went to the toilet. But I didn't know what happened. I slept off. thank God because it was God that brought me to this gospel. Back in the 70s when I was in the university, I was the president of Seventh-day Adventist Student Union. We were, it was difficult for anybody to convince us that Saturday, Sunday is the day of worship. In fact, we believe that worshiping on Sunday was a mark of the beast already. Uh, I had a young book written by Ellen G. White, The Great Con Controversy. We were using this book to hold seminars and converting people, telling them that Saturday was the real day of worship and we were holding seminars and we were making it. Do you know one day I had a dream? Masquerades were pursuing me in the dream and I was running for this masquerade until I ran into a group of people. They were singing, only Jesus can save, only Jesus can save. I ran into their knees, and that was why, how I wake up, woke up. And I said, what kind of a dream is this? Only Jesus can save. That was how God led me to the gospel, and he saved me. Thank God. Give glory to him. Uh, I want to I thank God for um, bringing me to my first um, UK camp meeting. I want to thank God for all he's done for me. I want to thank God for um, yesterday, last night, at the uh, youth prayer. He baptized me. I want to give all glory to God. he has done in my life. Um, I came to camp meeting with my salvation and on Monday I got sanctified but yesterday we had a youth prayer and um, I thought okay let me press on and get my baptism but I was like how can you get that? So I spoke to a, lot of, um, to a couple of people, we prayed together and um, it just wasn't coming so like everyone was then leaving to go back home and I was like oh do you know what I'll pray this evening and then Mercy told me no Dami pray now um, because you might not have that same zeal tonight so I was like okay cool so I pressed on I prayed and she said to me just reunite to your salvation and sanctification again to get your baptism and that's what I did and I give glory to God this early morning he reunited my salvation Amen. my sanctification and he baptized me with the Holy Ghost yeah. Please pray for me that I keep it. Amen. I want to thank God that I wasn't even meant to be here. This was um, something that happened at the last minute. It, it, if, it, if it was only... If I was not here today, I would have said that, well, I wouldn't have been here anyway, but by the grace of God, I am here. And uh, I thank God for my salvation certification and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And uh, please pray for me that I should keep this and not lose the value. Amen. I thank, I thank, God. I thank God for all he's done in my life. I thank him for the salvation of my soul, the sanctification and baptism of my soul. I thank him for his voice in my life. Um, all the time the devil tries to put doubt in my heart. And God tries to reassure me, and he tells me that I'm the one who created all the humans, and we're all different, so why should your blessing be the same as another person? Like, why are you expecting the same blessing as another person? So I thank God for putting that in my heart, and that I should expect the unexpected. And I thank God for the first year of uni. Last year I was, I was here, and I was praying to God, to help me and to guide me and to keep me in all my exams. And he made me the head and not the tail. And I thank God for everything. And I hope and I pray that he takes me to heaven at last. I thank God for saving my soul and, and healing my sister when she was sick. I want to thank God for saving my soul. 
I want to thank him for sanctification and for baptism of the Holy Ghost. 20 years ago, God brought us to this country from Italy. And uh, it's not that uh, salvation of 20 years ago that is keeping me up till now. Many times we have special meetings. I always pray to God. I want to be sure I'm saved. I want to be sure I'm saved. And at the beginning, before the car meeting, we were praying that God, every meeting we want to be blessed. So on Sunday, I was reanointed. And during the ordinance service this morning, God reanointed me again. So I want God to just answer all my prayers and I give him up. Amen. Well, I'd like to praise God today for saving my soul. God brought me to this wonderful gospel and blessed me, sanctified me, baptized me with the Holy Ghost and fire. You know, it, about three weeks now, I went to Portland. I don't know what happened. Maybe a bone, something happened, injured my bone. For people don't know, the bone is happy when I stand up. But when I lie down every morning, I cry to get out of bed. Even in this camp, every morning. But you know, God has healed me. Yeah. You know, I get up now, the pain, and I told God, why? Why can't I get healed? But God says, I want you to feel what others feel. Because sometimes I have a friend who says, tell her I'm in pain every day. I just say, oh, God will help you. But now I can empathize. That when people go through pain, I have gone through it almost three weeks. But God healed me. Today I took a friend out. We were driving back. How a bee got into my dress. I was screaming in the car, there's something, and the people driving me, they had to zip my dress down. I said, take this inset. They didn't know how it flew in, but you know, I got stung and the pain was so bad, but I just remembered that if I come to camp, they put something. I laid my hand, I said, Jesus, heal me. Amen. This afternoon, God healed me. Amen. This pain is gone, and I praise God. No, there are some places I can't go, but I am sure of this one thing that God is real, for I can feel. Him in my heart, my God is real, real in my soul. My God is real, for He washed me and made me whole. His love for me is like your gold my God is real for I can feel him in my soul some folk may doubt some folk may scorn all can go on and leave me alone but as for me, I will take God's part. And God is real, for I can feel Him in my heart. My God is real, is real in my soul. My God is real. For he has washed and made me whole. His love for me is like pure gold. My God is real, for I can feel him in my soul.
I cannot tell just how you felt when Jesus took your sins away. But since that day, yes, since that hour, God has been real, for I can feel Him in my heart. My God is real, He's real in my soul. My God is real, for He has washed. I made me whole His love for me Is like your gold My God is real For I can feel Him in my Amen. Is it not wonderful to serve a real God? Is it not wonderful to serve a God who can surprise us? Did you hear the choir song? It's really surprising what the Lord can do. Expect a surprise tonight. No, I don't think you understood what I said. I said expect a surprise tonight. Please open your Bibles with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11. Do you want to know that God who is real? Do you want to experience his surprise tonight? Let's read together. Ch chapter Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill. But time and chance happeneth to them all. You know, God is wonderful. God is faithful. God is fair. That passage there, gives me hope because he tells me that time and chance happens to all and it also makes me understand I don't know if you read if you understood it when we were reading together it says it's not because the race they won it because they were swift it's not because they knew how to do it that's why they were able to get and make the most of those chances it's not because they had the understanding or they were men of skill or, you know, they knew how to do it. In other words, what God is telling us here is that he just decided to bless. But you see, the Bible tells us time and chance happens to all. But it is one thing for time and chance. In other words, in our modern day language, a unique opportunity. It is one thing for it, for God to allow it to happen to us. It is another thing for me and you to identify it and say, man, this is my chance. You know, chance and opportunity, when they're seized, you can never tell what could come out of it. I'm excited. Why? Because... You, 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 you hear, let me tell you, I'm sure we, many of us know about the uh, IT chap, Bill Gates, the founder of Microsoft. Anywhere today in the world, you want to use a computer, the chance and likelihood is, is going to be using a Windows-based operating system. That is from the company of this man. But you know what happened? There were just two friends. In school, playing about with computer things. And apparently, they formed a, some kind of mushroom company together. 
And um, this other company, I'm not sure whether it was digital, we were told this when I was doing some IT training. This other company went to IBM at the time. Now, IBM, for those of us who are in the IT world, uh, they, they were the big guns. They were the big guys. They are the, you know, the, 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 the ones who almost owned the IT environment those times. And they went to them with their idea that, um, you know, we've, we've got this idea for, a, you know, a, an operating system, how we can do it together. And apparently the, 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 the CEO of IBM waved them away. He was too busy. He was, he was busy playing golf. So he told them, nah, we, we, basically the effect was, we don't have time for you guys, for those you kind of guys. And those guys went to Bill Gates and his colleagues. And they sat down, and they began to discuss together. <laughs> and they say the rest is history. Yeah. What came out of that meeting was that Microsoft Windows operating system environment. Today, the guy is a billionaire. Why? There was one opportunity. He was able to perceive, understand, <laughs> these guys that are coming to me, if we can work together, something's going to come out of this. And he grabbed his opportunity. You know, that was a, a miracle. A miracle. Why? Because it was chance. It was time. Actually, those guys were not even interested in Bill Gates and his friend at that time. But God opened to them a chance. Can I ask you tonight? Camp meeting 2017. The last evening revival and evangelistic service. Do you perceive some time that God has given you? Do you perceive a chance that God has given you? Do you perceive your opportunity tonight? I pray you will miss it. Yeah. You know, many people have made opportunities, maximized their opportunities. You know, the country of Norway, they began digging probably some decades ago. And they struck oil around the area. And you see, where some countries was siphoning oil and the, the leaders of those countries were pocketing it and shipping it overseas and everything else. Norway decided, you know what? The oil at this time is at a massively high price. What we're going to do, we're going to create a sovereign wealth fund. Because by the way we see this, this won't last forever. And what they did, all the oil, once they've worked out all the, all the costs, all the profit, we went into the sovereign wealth fund. Today, there are trillions, trillions of pounds in that sovereign wealth fund. And guess what? The price of oil today has plummeted, gone right down. Now, people who are relying on oil, where before they were living big because oil was big money that time. Nowadays, they're struggling. But because these guys, they saw an opportunity, they realized, they perceived it, they caught hold of it, they made the best of it. They're singing today. You know, <laughs> may God just help us. Amen. It's not only extracts. You know, when you make use of an opportunity, you feel good. You know, many of uh, those who live locally with us in Bexley will remember our previous little blue car. Very beautiful, reliable car. And um, as I was just thinking on this, I remembered. I was just, when I was coming back from church or something, and I just saw this dirty, raggedy, you know, messed up old car in one corner in front of a garage. Mechanics garage. <laughs> but I believe the Spirit of God pricked my eyes to see there's something more to this car than what you see. 
And uh, I just went to inquire. They didn't even put any sign that it's for sale or anything. I just went to inquire. Um, this car, is, are you guys selling it or are you interested? And the people said, well, it's not really ours, but um, we'll give you the number of the guy and then you can call him. Fine. And I gave him a call. And he went to voicemail and I left a message. Yeah, call me back, this and that. And later on he called me back. And I said, yeah, I'm just calling. I just saw one, you know, car somewhere, you know, wherever in the corner. And uh, I just thought I should inquire about it. And he said, make me an offer. <laughs> and I thought, OK. And uh, well, some people called me an Ijebu man. <laughs> in other words, a miser. And I made him, I gave him a ridiculously low offer. And I think he laughed. He laughed because he knew, obviously, the car was worth far more than that. Anyway, we concluded and said, okay, I, let, let me even come and see it and um, see what's happening and whatever. Well, long and short of it, little did I know, he had gone on holiday and left his me uh, garage mechanic business to his wife. And as far as she's concerned, she doesn't know about mechanic or whatever. As a mechanic, all the spare parts, he would have gone to the scrapyard and bought scrap and put it on the car because it was a car that needed repairs. But because it was his wife, she went direct to main dealer or wherever, bought brand new everything. And he t when I got there, I saw this looks brand new. Then, then he said, yeah. I mean, can you imagine women? Well, I would have just gone to the scrapyard and bought. She would almost finish all my money just wasting on this car. And I'm thinking, okay. And by the time all our discussions were finished, it's okay. Make me an offer. I said, okay, right. I made him an offer. He said, no, 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 come on, be serious, be serious. Long and short, I said, well, you see, it's a nice, it's okay, it's all right, it's all right car, but there's still this to be done, there's still that to be done. And he too knew that he couldn't sell it for the normal price he would have sold it because there's still bits and pieces to be done. Long and short, we got our car. And guess what? We got it for about half the price we would have got it on the open market. Now, how do you think I felt? How do you think I felt? Maximizing that opportunity. You know, that was just, we're talking of the physical. Yeah. But you see, a missed opportunity will always end up in regret. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. An unidentified or missed chance will lead to waste. Waste of time. Waste of resources. Waste of even yourself. Missed opportunities. You missed that time. You missed that chance. Opportunity is gone. And sometimes, in fact, many a times, you can never retrieve it in life. As I said, those missed opportunities will lead to regret. <laughs> but I'm happy tonight. Amen. Because I believe Amen. God is opening eyes tonight. Amen. God is opening eyes tonight. Amen. Eyes like that of Anna. Amen. She'd been coming, coming, coming. Came one year, came two years, no child. And on top of that, her adversary was rubbing salt into the wound. Hmm. And it came to a point, Anna said, You know what, God? This time round, I need to know if I'm serving you a living God or I'm just wasting my time. God, right now, I need to know and see you and know you for myself. Yeah. Enough of the messing about. Today is today. Yeah. <laughs> she caught a hold of a time. She caught a hold of a chance. Yeah. And did God leave her as she was? <laughs> you know, God performed a miracle. Yeah. Why? Because God was the one who had shut up a womb. 
Many of us would have blamed the devil. Mm -hmm. But you see, when we see things, and it's easy to blame the devil. You know, don't give the devil too much praise, you know. In fact, don't give him any praise at all. If God didn't allow it, it wouldn't happen. Don't you understand? That is why when she, she went back to God. And she found that God is a rewarder of them. That how? Diligently seek him. <laughs> oh, she got her answer. No matter what trick the devil tried to play. Even there in the church. But she got her answer. Tonight, you can get your answer. I don't know what it is that you brought. I don't know what. What? Whatever. Maybe your issue is issue of husband. Or wife. Or you're living on the bread line. You, you know, like you're running the rat race and the water is just is coming to here. You're paying the bills and there's nothing left. <laughs> you can pray through tonight. Yeah. I've been in that situation. I had to go back to God and say, God, please have mercy. By the time we paid our bills, in fact, I can, I can see, looking at our outgoings and coming in, it's not covering. It's going to be only a matter of time. We, we're, going, we, we're going to be in trouble. And you know what God did? God divinely intervened. Amen. For me, what he did was to change my job. For you, what he may do, I don't know. But he will answer your prayer. Amen. <laughs> Remember Jacob? Remember Jacob? He came to that time and place. <laughs> he heard that message. Esau's on his way, by the way. <laughs> and he's on his way with 400 men. And um, they're not coming with flowers. They're armed. <laughs> and uh, Jacob, after he's tried all his own devices, <laughs> he, he comes to the realization, you know what, God? <laughs> if you don't deliver me, I'm finished. Have you come to that place? Have you come to that point? That God, you know what? Unless you do it, it's not done. He got a hold on God. Angel said, let me go. Let me go. The day is breaking. <laughs> Jacob said, excuse me, angel. It seems he didn't understand what I've been saying all along. Let you go? Go where? I said, my brother is coming. He's coming with his gang. 400 odd. If you don't do something, if you don't bless me, in fact, you're not going nowhere. <laughs> you know you can hold God tonight. Yeah. I don't know what your situation is. I don't know what it is you have. But you can get a hold on God tonight. And say, God, unless you bless me, unless you do something for me, you're not going. I'm not letting you go. May God bless you as you come and pray.
Heavenly Father, what a privilege again we have tonight to call upon your name to plead that you do not pass us by, but you bless us, that you answer our prayers, that you help us to take advantage of this time, of this chance, of this opportunity. Jesus, please answer our prayers tonight. Save souls, sanctify, baptize with Holy Ghost and fire, heal sick bodies, give us new testimonies, do something new, something surprising, something special, that we make 2017 a special time, a special camp meeting. Come down right now and bless us abundantly as we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.